The future is here, and prisons are being moved into space. Emily Varnack, the daughter of the President of the United States, is flying on an inspection to the orbital prison MS-1, which is designed to hold half a million dangerous criminals in suspended animation. The reason for the inspection is that there are rumors of illegal medical experiments being conducted there. Washington, D.C., 2079. The head of the Secret Service, Scotland Gray, is interrogating former CIA agent Snow. Snow is trying to avoid answering questions about what happened at the motel, and he is beaten for his defiance. Later, Snow remembers fighting with the man who had just mortally wounded his friend, Frank. Snow's phone is ringing the whole time, but he can only answer it after he has defeated his opponent. He receives a warning about a setup too late. Snow remembers how Frank, dying in his arms, gave him a lighter and asked him to keep it, as well as his briefcase. At that moment, the military burst into the room. Snow hides behind the door, and he manages to escape from the room and reach the roof. He jumps down to save himself, and he miraculously survives. He sees a motorcycle, and he uses it to reach the subway station. He throws the briefcase into the subway car that Mice is riding, and he is then arrested. Now, Scotland Gray tells Snow that Frank was suspected of selling secret space technology, and that Snow was supposedly the one who shot him. He shows Snow a video of the shooting. Snow tries to defend himself, saying that Frank had long distrusted the Secret Service and had asked him to cover for him. At that moment, Harry Shaw, an employee of the President's Special Service, enters the interrogation room and asks Snow to name his accomplice. Meanwhile, Mice leaves the briefcase he received from Snow in a locker at the station. He is then ambushed, and Snow writes Mice's name in the ashes of his cigarette on the table. Harry immediately ends the interrogation and asks his men to find Mice. Later, Scotland Gray goes to the President, who is informed that his daughter Emily has gone on a commission to the orbital prison MS-1, where, according to rumors, illegal medical experiments are being conducted. The reason is that the prisoners are in suspended animation, which, according to rumors, causes brain damage. However, the prison warden denies this claim. Meanwhile, Scotland Gray tells Snow that he is facing 30 years in suspended animation for the murder of the CIA agent. The procedure of immersion begins. On the station, Emily asks to bring her one of the prisoners, who turns out to be the rapist and psychopath Hideo. He provokes the guard, who, contrary to safety regulations, has left his weapon with him. He steals the guard's pistol. Hideo manages to kill all of Emily's guards and injure the girl but she still manages to get to the corridor and close the doors to the orbital station. The police station receives an alarm signal. While the guards are shooting the locks, the girl reaches the command center. One of the lab technicians does not understand her order to hide and stays on his feet when Hideo bursts into the room and demands to open all the cells where the prisoners are sleeping. The technician is forced to do so, but the psychopath kills the man anyway and finds Emily, who has escaped. The prisoners kill the station's guards. One of them, Alex, cleverly seizes a weapon. At this time, Emily's bodyguard wakes up and goes after her, sending a signal of danger to Scotland Gray. The prison's guards try to launch a sleeping gas, but they do not have time to do so. The prisoners burst into the command center, where Hideo tries to take Emily, but Alex unexpectedly defends her, reminding him of the need to have hostages. Then a signal comes in about the approach of police ships. Hideo forces the scientists to prepare the cannon and, contrary to Alex's instructions, shoots down the ships, which causes his rage on the ground. Scotland Gray reports to the president about the takeover of the prison and asks to send a SWAT team to the station. But Harry believes that only one person needs to be sent. With a specific mission to rescue the president's daughter, Snow categorically refuses to hear this offer. But upon learning that Mice is on the station, he agrees. Harry returns him Frank's lighter. Snow is taken to the station in a spacesuit. He sneaks into the command center and kills Hideo. He then releases the prisoners and the hostages. The prisoners are taken away by the police, and Emily is rescued. Snow is hailed as a hero. The prisoners gather all the surviving personnel of the station in one room. One of them is a woman. The doctor gives Emily his coat 
and quickly treats her leg wound before the flight. He also learns that Emily has a sensor that tracks her location after she is found. They are to board a lifeboat, and he also receives a map with a code of access and an explosive device in the form of a metal cable. Meanwhile, on the station, Alex establishes himself as the leader and demands that the doctor be brought to him. Because of the white coat, Emily is mistaken for him and led to the gangster. Alex realizes that the prisoners, while they do not know that Emily is the daughter of the president, execute the warden of the prison by throwing him into outer space. Nevertheless, a negotiator from Scotland Gray arrives at the station. He convinces Alex to think first of himself and promises to take him off the station. The released hostage will be proof that Alex is in charge. Alex makes a decision during the conversation. Again, he gets the opportunity to see the number and weapons of the prisoners through the camera built into the negotiator's glasses. Meanwhile, the negotiator convinces Alex to release the wounded woman. The guard leads Emily to the exit, but then Hideo, the one who shot Emily, interferes. The woman is crawling along the station's hull at that time, but the guard notices him and warns Alex, who kills the negotiator, and sends Emily to the common room. He admits to others that Hideo is his brother and orders to find a daredevil. Meanwhile, snow again penetrates the station, and Alex sees the president's speech on TV and realizes who is in his hands. At this time, Emily and her bodyguard manage to neutralize the accompanying person. They run out of the elevator just as Snow finds them. He gets into a fight and defeats the prisoner, only tying the donated fuse to his neck. But then he is hit on the head by Emily's bodyguard, who takes the girl to a room and locks the doors. But it turns out that the room is airtight, and people will soon simply suffocate. At this time, Alex orders a couple of engineers to be brought to the door, so that they open the door behind which Emily hid. Snow is trying to find Maish at the same time. Alex kills one engineer at once, so that the second does not dare to refuse to try to open the doors. Snow is again directed to another entrance to the room through the air duct. Ahead is a pipe in which a torsion field is in operation. Snow is again convinced that he will simply fly over this place, but he does not believe it until a prisoner attacks him. The man and the prisoner fly out into the pipe and fight in the air. Snow again wins and gets to the other side. Alex sees this scene on the internal communication and stops the fans. Snow again flies down, but the engines start again. The man miraculously escapes. At this time, Alex calls the next engineer. Emily's bodyguard, realizing that there is less and less oxygen left, orders the girl to lie down on the floor and solves the problem radically. Meanwhile, Snow reaches the room and enters it from above. He brings Emily to her senses and leads her through the pipe. Then the prisoners open the door, but there is no one inside. Then Alex calls a communication specialist and orders him to find the fugitives. At this moment, Snow's connection is lost again. He leads Emily at random until they fall. In a certain room, he treats her wound and reminds her that they only have two lifeboat seats. After that, he gives her the map and sends her to the lifeboat. At this moment, he hears that Alex is sending all the prisoners after their trail. Snow again takes Emily. With him, he finds prison jumpsuits and orders Emily to change into them. Then he makes a mixture of water, engine oil, and coffee, and applies it to Emily's shaved head, turning her into a brunette. And to improve the disguise, he hits her in the face. Asterisk, asterisk. Meanwhile, Alex informs Scotland Gray that he knows who Emily is and makes demands. Snow and Emily, in order to find mice, go to the common room for prisoners. One of them tries to stop the strangers, and a fight ensues. The couple runs to the elevator and sees the one they need. Snow again manages to close the doors in front of the others. But Mice does not understand what they want from him. The girl explains that he went crazy from suspended animation. Mice again starts repeating unrelated words and does not answer Snow's questions. And then they see that the prisoners are trying to open the doors. The trio Snow puts Emily in the escape pod and promises to come for her on the next one. After promising to find her on Earth, the pod launches, and Snow sits down at the window because there are no two pods. Suddenly, Emily calls him. She got out of the pod because as long as she's here, 
Her father won't allow a raid, which means there's a better chance of saving the hostages. And she also figured out what Mice was saying and knows where the briefcase is. A broadcast turns on, where Hideo is killing the hostages, calling on Emily to come to him. The girl says where she is, but the maniac shoots them all and pushes her into the elevator again. Emily admits that she doesn't know where the briefcase is. She just wanted to make him help. The couple rides to another floor, where they come across a laboratory with the corpses of prisoners. It turns out that the rumors of the experiments were true, and then they are captured by Alex's people. But Snow kills several and jumps down the shaft. Alex takes Emily to the command center, sees the killed hostages, and beats Hideo. At this time, Snow comes to his senses and receives an order from the center to find a spacesuit, put it on, and jump out. They will pick him up. Meanwhile, Scott informs Alex that MS-1 is falling to Earth, and if the prisoners don't let the military on board, they will start a raid. Then Alex orders Emily to ask her father to cancel the raid. The girl takes the microphone and asks to burn this trash to hell. Alex hits her, and Hideo, who is looking forward to the fun on Earth, comes in. Scott removes the president from office and announces a raid. At this time, Alex is scolding Hideo, because the girl is their last chance, and he stabs his brother with a knife. Hideo comes to Emily, she manages to burn him with a lighter, and the enraged prisoner attacks with a knife. But he is stopped by Snow's hand. He leads the girl to the necessary compartment, while outside a space battle is unfolding. The couple puts on spacesuits and jumps into open space. They land on a street in a night city, where Snow is immediately arrested. Later, Emily remembers the words said by mice and goes to the subway. She finds the camera and takes out the case and then drives to the motel and realizes how the murder happened. Later, Snow comes and brings the briefcase. He finally found it and is ready to give it back because Frank was not selling secrets, but returning them. Snow opens the case, but it turns out to be empty. And then Snow asks, and where does he know the code? Realizing that he has been exposed, Harry is still confident that no one will arrest him, because he knows all the secrets. And then Snow grabs the traitor and burns a mark of a rat on his face. The military takes Harry away, and Scott thanks Snow for his work. On the street, Snow suddenly realizes that the lighter contains a flash drive, and it was her that Frank asked not to give away. At this moment, Emily calls him. She herself found out his name, which he tries to hide, Marion. And now, she will be his Robin Hood. But first she will return the debt and hits him in the face, after which the couple goes to eat ice cream. At one time, the film was accused of plagiarism of the film Escape from New York by John Carpenter and was even fined. And yet, the plot is not bad, sometimes even daring and funny. The acting is also at the level, and there is humor. Subscribe, like, and of course, comment. Let's discuss this movie together. This is Morfox. See you soon.